What's good guys? So in this video, we are going to be looking and dissecting an app that makes a ton of money. And I'm going to be teaching you how you can easily build this app using no code tools like Bubble, AppGyver, or any other tool that you may prefer. So the app that we're talking about today is called Nomad List. And here's an article all the way from 2020. And it says here, Peter Levels makes a million dollars a year from Nomad List and Remote OK. And then below it says, since this article was originally published, Peter's income grew from $600,000 a year to 1 million. And so I've been following this project for quite a while. And I'm pretty sure these numbers are correct because I remember reading it back in 2014, 2015, he was making something like $300,000 a year. And before that, it was a free product. So I used to use this product a lot. I'm not using it as much now because my life circumstances have changed over the years. But nevertheless, this is a profitable product. So there is a market for it. And so today I'm going to teach you how you can build something very, very similar, or at least with your own special sauce added to it. Uh, using no-code tools very, very quickly and easily and launch it to the world and, and hopefully have a profitable app as well. So what is Nomadless? Well, this is Nomadless here. This is the homepage. And on the homepage, we have basically a bunch of cards. And if you are experienced in one way or another and kind of looking at these apps, you should immediately recognize this as a list, a list view. And so we have a list of locations, a list of cities, we have Thailand, some um, island island in Thailand. We have Canary Islands in Spain. We have Lisbon, Portugal, Porto, Portugal, Buenos Aires, and a bunch of other places. And you can also sort them by you know any any uh, characteristic that you want. So nomad score, family score, quality of life score, your score, cost, cost, in internet speed, font safety, temperature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So lots of details, lots of stats. You, can all, you also have filters by continent, Asia, Europe, Latin America, Oceania, Africa, Middle East. You also have a filter here. You can, you, know, you can say cold now, warm now, mild now. So you can pick any kind of, you know, any kind of tag, if you will, good nightlife, uh, okay, very good, exceptional, lots and lots of interesting things, European Union, not in Schengen. So depending on what you want, depending on your needs, you can do a lot of fil filtering. So there's a lot of functionality. It, the app looks really good. And so if you click on one of these uh, cards here, you're going to see a detail view. It's going to be like a pop-up with various uh, details about the destination that kind of summarizes it here. And it also has a couple of other features. It has meetups. There's chat. Uh, there's uh, hiring remotely. And what do we have here? This is traveling today. So the next thing you guys need to understand is what are the features that are implemented here? Number one. And number two, what kind of features will I want to build for version 0.0001? Because you may not realize it, but there's a lot of things happening here and you may not want to build a lot of these things in the initial version. So what I mean by that is this is required, right? This is required. These are cities. These are details. I want to learn more about the city. Things like meetups, Things like um, today's pick, things like hiring remotely, things like traveling today, things like new members, these are all extras. Yes, you may want to include them. Yes, they're useful. Yes, people uh, will be getting value from them and are getting value from them right now. But that is not required when you're launching the app. So in other words, you need to understand what is the one thing, the one entity you must include in the first version, in the first beta version, version, not even version 1.0, but version 0.0001, all right? And for that, we are gonna go in here and we're gonna start working out on our views, our entities, what do we need to do? So the first thing we need to do is we need to come in here and we need to think about the views, okay? So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Everything starts with the views, okay? I had another video that I talked about generally how to build an app. And I always say you also you always want to start with the views, right? Because these apps are consumer centric. Okay, they're gonna be they're gonna be interacting with people. If the app is not interacting with a person, if it's like a background thing, then obviously you know it's gonna have a different strategy. But we are talking about building a consumer app or a business app, and I and it's gonna interact either with consumers or with business users. So in most cases, 
you're going to be dealing with views. You know, they're going to look at something. They're going to input their data on it. They're going to read something. They're going to update their profile. You know, they're going to be interacting with something. So you always want to start with views. And so for this, you want to start, you know, working out. So what kind of views are we going to have? Well, the first view is going to be a list view, right? So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make this smaller so that it, it's a little bit separated from this header here. The next view is going to be detail view. And that's it, right? We have, if you go in here, this is a list view, right? If you click on it, you're going to see a detail view. I think they charge money for, for it right now, so I'm not, I'm not going to be able to see it. But that is the idea. If you click on it, you're going to have a detail view, okay? Everything else, if we go to search filter, if you go to all these tabs, grid view, sort by, all of that is part of this kind of, um, of our list view, okay? So that is the two views we're looking at right now. The next most important thing is what kind of entities are we dealing with? What is the main entity that we want to um, uh, we want to showcase, right? So I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say entities. And what is an entity? An entity is pretty much like a table in a database. It's a type of data in, in bubble. It's uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when I say entities, it's very abstract because I don't know what kind of tool you're using. Is this going to be a database, bubble, app guy, or it doesn't matter, but I like to call it entity. So I'm going to go in here, copy and paste it. And the first entity we have is locations, okay? Locations. Now there's another entity you may not have noticed, and that is users, because for this app to work, even if we're not using uh, these little widgets here, traveling today, um, new members, et cetera, et cetera, what we have is locations. We have locations and we have users, meaning that I'm going to log in and I'm going to do something. Of course, you can make it anonymous in the beginning. That's fine. If you're not going to have any of this functionality, you can make it anonymous. But most often than not, you may want to charge people. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to create a free app. You, we want to make money, right? This is about making money. And so you will need to have the person register and then you can charge them. And for that, you need a users kind of thing. So we're going to say users. Now with Bubble, users is built in. You may need to add a couple of fields depending on what you're doing, but this is built, built in. Locations is not. Locations is user defined. So I'm going to put, a, put that after users. So we have users and we have locations. The next thing you guys want to do is you want to come in here and you want to start thinking about, well, what kind of fields do we need? And so we have locations. That is kind of the main entity. And what kind of um, fields does this entity have, right? So we're going to go in here. Uh, we have locations uh, and what and let's copy and paste that make it a little bit smaller and what do we have we have name okay we have name we have country or city you can call it city maybe but I would just say name because uh, it's just a, it's a generic term that for every entity for user you're gonna have name for something else you're gonna have name etc cetera, etc cetera. name country uh, average temperature okay average temp uh, average internet speed, okay. Um, current current temp, okay. What else is there? Let's go back. Uh, cost, uh, cost. We have here safety, fun, internet, all of these kind of stats, right? So I'm just gonna say cost, and then safety, and that's it, right? You can keep adding these later on, but that's kind of what we have now. If I put that in here, right under it, or maybe something like this, you can see that that's part of it, right? You can see that that's set up for users. Uh, what are we going to have for users? Let's copy and paste this. We can even do something like this. Copy and paste. Copy here. I'm going to say this is going to be locations. And this is going to be users. I'm going to delete that. Okay, let's do that. Users. All right, so we have this. And this is going to be users. Now, for the users, we're going to have name. Uh, we may want uh, first name. We may want first name, uh, last name username, uh, email, and maybe some kind of payment status, their plan, right? Are they on our monthly plan, a one-time plan, et cetera, et cetera, depending on how we structure it. And so here we have kind of two main entities. Now you can go further, right? Because if you go in here, as you can see, there's an, an, another entity here called meetups. Like if we scroll up, this is meetups, right? So this I believe is extra 29 a month. And what is meetups? Well, meetups is, is a list of users plus the location and the date. So we can do that as well. We're going to go in here, copy, paste. We're going to call this meetups. 
All right, so we're going to say um, users, which is an array of users. Now, actually, let's delete that. Let's copy and paste that. And so we have um, name, actually city or location. Location, and we have date. And then we have users. And I'm just going to put something like this, uh, these uh, square brackets, because in some programming language, that is a type that denotes many of these, essentially an array of users. So I'm just going to leave that there. And th this kind of tells you this, this is going to be a one-to-many relationship. So this field is going to link back to users, and it's going to have an array of users here. All right, so that's kind of what we have. We have use, list, detail, and you can, we can have another view here, widgets. Okay, I'm just going to actually gonna delete that, delete this, and I'm going to add another one. So it could be like, um, you know, widget. Uh, this could be a meetups, meetups widget. Then it could be traveling widget. You know, what else do they have? Um, it could be to today's pick, right? You can do that as well. Today's pick could be a separate view that's part of a list view of this kind of main view. And this is our homepage, right? Okay. And this is our detail for the location. Now, once we have the views, we have entities. Let me kind of organize it a little bit. Let's kind of organize this. All right, so something like this. Once we have this, we can start thinking about the logic. This is kind of why I like this system. It makes sense. We need views first because we are prioritizing it for the users. We need entities because views cannot exist without entities. Next, we have the logic. So I'm going to go in here, copy, and I'm going to do the logic. Now, what is the logic? Well, the logic, let's think about the logic. First logic, I'm going to copy this. We have a, uh, when we click on that card, on that main page, we go to the detail. So it could be like something like card, click, detail. Next, we have maybe sign up, maybe a sign up logic. We have login logic. Uh, we have pay, pay, uh, you know, buy a plan, buy plan logic. All of these are logic. All of these are events. And one thing you, you guys need to understand is that you won't be able to design this, this whole app like this. This is just to, to sit down and understand what's happening because you can start building it. But believe me, it's much better to sit down and start doing it. I actually do it on a regular notebook. I, I don't do it on the computer. I do it on a notebook because it's just it's more comfortable for me. I'm doing this this way for you guys so that you can see what's happening. But I like to sit down and and do it in a notebook with a pen and paper. And that way I know exactly what I'm up against because a lot of people, they underestimate the amount of time needed to kind of build this thing out. So if you include all the features like meetups and all this crazy stuff initially, it's going to take a while to build out an app. You just want to include just the basics. So we have the views, and obviously we're not going to include meetups or traveling or today's widgets. That's going to be later, right? We're not going to be including that. I just have it here. We're going to do list and detail. For entities, we're going to do users and locations. We're not going to do meetups. And for logic, uh, we are going to do car click detail, sign up uh, and login, and buy plan maybe later. I don't think it's going to be an initial version. Maybe it will be, right? Maybe you just want to go out uh, launch this whole thing with guns blazing. You want, you know, you want uh, people to start uh, paying for it. That's cool too. In that case, yeah, you can have this kind of plan there. But that's kind of what we have initially, right? A lot of apps are very, very simple, right? And so if we go back to Bubble, let's take a look at this app. Did we miss anything? No, because this is going to be taken care of Bubble or, you know, whichever tool you want. Uh, the filtering is going to be taken care of it. You know, you're going to have a continent as part of location. So if we go back here, you have a location and we're going to have a continent here. And then we can group it by this field. We can just group it by this field. And that way we can just display um, all the continents. We can just display all the continents here and then click on it. And it's only going to filter uh, using that specific field. So you can do that in Bubble very, very easily. And so that's kind of what we have. I believe this, this takes care of um, kind of our initial version. We have views, we have entities, we have logic. And now you, you can simply go out to Bubble and start building the app, build the UI, build everything. And obviously, when you start building it, uh, you're going to run into various things that I'm not covering here. And that's absolutely fine because the whole purpose here is to get started with something, to understand what you're dealing with. Later on, as you're building it, you may need to add a couple of fields here, a couple of fields here. That's, that's always what happens, and that's absolutely fine. But right now, this is a... 
solid a kind of blueprint in order to go out and start building this app. And obviously later on you may realize you need to do some kind of backend um, request because you know to get weather, that's an API call. So for instance, this average uh, temp, that's gonna be maybe an API call. You know, it's not gonna be a fixed uh, fixed value or average uh, you know air temperature, right? That's gonna be an API call, okay? Because we cannot uh, you know fix um, a value that's changing all the time. So you're gonna be making changes here and there. You know, some values are obviously gonna be fixed. Some are values you may need to make a call once a day or once an hour in order to get the, the current value but you're gonna realize that as you go out and build it. And so that's kind of the blueprint for you guys in order to go out and start building an app similar to Nomad List. Later on, you can add more functionality, you can do traveling today, you can do hiring remotely, which is a whole other topic as well. You can, you can have all these widgets and you can add more features that are not even here. You can go out, you can take it further, you can, you can uh, keep growing this product and make it more interesting, more comprehensive, but for now, I believe this functionality that we have here is a great start. All right, guys, so that is all that I wanted to show you guys today. I really, really hope you enjoy this video, you like this format, because I plan to make more videos, and I wanna show you how you can easily create all kinds of apps, not just apps like I talked about in this video, but different apps, interactive apps, non-interactive apps, apps for business, apps for consumers, all kinds of different apps and different types of apps, where you can create them easily using a no-code tool, all right? So if you enjoyed this video, give this video a fat thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Anytime you, you leave a comment below or you give this video a thumbs up, it really, really helps out the channel and it gives me more motivation to create more of these free videos for you. And if you like this kind of content, you are interested in either building your own uh, SaaS tool, or you're just curious how this whole no-code revolution is all about, then definitely make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell, and that way you do not miss any future no-code videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in a future video.